Hello and welcome. We will discuss machine learning for beginners. This is part 1 and we may put more episodes to describe this topic further. This presentation is primarily good for those who are not in computer science field. However, would like to know some basics about machine learning and its applications. Or for those who started investigating about ML or AI areas. My name is Alok Sharma and my primary affiliation is Riken Japan. So let us first see what is machine learning. When we talk about machine learning, are we building robots like number one or like number two? Actually not. We are not going to build robots in machine learning. We are not designing hardware. However, building concepts or using tools on software. Nonetheless, machine learning tools or techniques can be implemented in robotic applications. Computers are well known to perform laborious tasks. However, we want to make machines intelligent so that it can perform desired tasks and our lives will become convenient. Machine learning functions on a software platform which eventually works on a hardware system either processed by CPUs or CUDA enabled GPUs. Many terms we interchangeably used in machine learning. Sometimes these terms mean different things such as prediction, classification, recognition, verification, clustering and identification. Machine learning can be subdivided into two main types. Supervised learning where, as the name suggests, the learning is guided or supervised in a nature such as a teacher is present to guide. In other words, the target information is known or available. The learning of machines is carried by known data, that is, with known class label information. We will see shortly what is class label. The second type is unsupervised learning, where, as the name suggests, no teacher or parent are present and the kid has to find her way out. In other words, no target or class label information is available. Let us understand supervised learning with the help of an illustration. If you ask a three-year-old boy, what is this fruit or what is this fruit, he will promptly reply that one is an apple and another one is an orange. So, what do we understand from this example? Basically, a three-year-old boy can adapt to his surroundings and can act accordingly. The same adaptation we want to teach to a machine to recognize and provide actions. So how does supervised learning work? A given object or objects are extracted into some meaningful features such as for fruits, shape, weight or color could be features to distinguish between an apple and an orange. These features or patterns are then processed to a classifier. The classifier will give the output as target label also known as class label. In this particular case, the output will be either apple or orange. If the fruit is apple, we expect the output label to be an apple. Would you figure out what could be other name of this system? We can call this system as pattern recognition system. 
The classification or recognition term is widely used under supervised learning. How good a classifier is generally measured or evaluated by classification performance. Now let us see an application of supervised learning system. In a fruit detection system, fruits are coming in a line and a sensor or a camera is watching incoming objects. The camera captures the image and send it to the machine learner which tells whether the fruit is apple or orange. This target information is then given to robots to act accordingly. For example, place apples in the apple box and place oranges in the orange box. So how this system works? Input data is processed via feature selector or feature extractor which extracts the raw data into some meaningful features somewhere here. This will give a feature vector for each sample. Therefore, a fruit is represented by a d-dimensional feature vector. These vectors are then processed by the classifier somewhere here for decision making at the output. In the supervised learning, the data set is usually divided into training set, test set and sometimes validation set. Training set means the input that is feature vectors and output that is target information is available for learning. In this case, we can say that some prior information is available. Now let us see the other branch of machine learning where target information is not provided. This branch is known as unsupervised learning. The word clustering is preferably used for unsupervised learning case. Let us see this with the help of an illustration. A bag of fruits is given. We may not be able to recognize the fruits. However, can we arrange them? Basically, we want to arrange similar fruits together in one bag and different ones apart. If we do this arrangement, then we found three distinct bags. This arrangement is called clustering. The learning process to achieve this arrangement is unsupervised learning. So basically in clustering, we may not have any prior information as we had in the supervised learning tasks. Here we want to arrange similar objects together. And we want to arrange dissimilar objects in different bags or groups or clusters. Now let us see some examples of clustering in real life cases. How do you define beauty? If I say you have one correct choice to select the right lady, which one would you select? Note only one is available. You may select as number one, number two or number three. Have you selected? If so, let me tell you that only number three is available for you. If you have selected number three, then you made the right choice. So you can congratulate yourself. But hang on. Number three is not a human. She is a robot. Leaving the humor, basically measures can be established to identify beauty. Such as length or width of nose, eyes, lips and so on. Positions of eyes or eyebrows. Structure of eyebrows and chin and so on. So you can develop clustering algorithm for facial beauty. Let us see some more examples of clustering. Such as in biology, we can use to group gene homologous sequences into gene types, assign genotypes, and so on. Clustering can also be done in medicine, where clustering can be used in separating different types of tissue and blood in a 3D image, analyze patterns of antibiotics resistance, 
divide affluence map into distinct regions. Clustering in business or marketing is used in segmenting groups of customers for goods, group shopping items into a set of unique products. Clustering in computer science used to divide digital image into distinct regions for border detection or object recognition or grouping structures in data such as in anomaly detection. Clustering can be done in other areas such as in social science where you can use for crime analysis, educational data mining, behavior analysis and robotics such as track objects and detect outliers in other areas as well such as in mathematical chemistry climatology petroleum geology physical geography and so on finally we can see the overview of machine learning we have seen two broader branches of machine learning techniques and these are supervised learning and unsupervised learning supervised learning is used to classify samples into known categories or class labels in this case training set test set and sometimes validation set are used for learning on the other hand unsupervised learning is performed to cluster the data set we have seen examples of classification and clustering in the previous slides thank you for watching vinaka arigato and sheshe